Hello, Gizmo. That's right, it's Gizmos, because it's Blender 4.3. And what you're seeing right now is me playing around with Blender Gizmos. What this is, is it's geometry nodes, but made interactive. So in this case, I took all the primitives, like cube, cylinder, torus, whatever, and I made them fully procedural to solve this problem exactly. You know how when you add a primitive, like let's say you add a cone, and you change some of the settings, right? You say, I want less vertices, maybe a higher radius and a higher second radius. You pick these settings, you move the object, and you've now lost control, because what if I want to make it five vertices or something like that, and this is true of all of these. So I made something called better primitives, and I'll show you how to make these in a second, where let's say I now add in a cone, we now have these gizmos that let you, again, change the radius, change the vertices in a very interactive way. And the beauty of it is, no matter where you move it, what you do, you still have control over these settings, so it's non-destructive. You can throw modifiers on top of this, so this is a wireframe modifier, and it remains fully procedural. So we're going to talk about how you make something like this, but this is available if you want to try it out. I highly recommend it, which is a bit rigged because I made it. But to any patrons or CG Matter dot com website subscribers, you're going to get this bundled in for free. So the first thing to do is to take any object like a cube and add in some geometry nodes. So I'm going to take the group input and get rid of it. And let's try to start with something simple like a grid. If we have a grid, there's really like two main controls we care about, which is kind of the X radius and the Y radius. Luckily for us, these are literally controls here. So I want to modify these two. And maybe even I also want to add some vertices. And the way you would do that normally is you add in a group input, you say I want to control X and I want to control Y. And now you have these settings exposed, but of course you have no gizmo. So nowadays when you type in gizmo, you're going to have three options and you're going to see immediately when I add the linear gizmo, we get this gizmo over here that you can play with. Of course, it doesn't do anything, but if you do not see this, sometimes it seems to be a glitch. You go into edit mode, you go back and it appears, or you can hit this button. So basically what I want to do is I want to drive something like the size of X by this gizmo. Now, the way this works is it's a bit counterintuitive. We just take this and connect it to the X, which I'm saying is counterintuitive because now the information starts at the gizmo, and then it goes to the x value, which then propagates to the grid. So it's almost like we have reverse connections, which is indicated by this double line. So because this is now connected to the x, as I increase this and decrease it, it does this. Notice that if I go below zero, it seems to clamp, and otherwise I can keep increasing forever. I could also make the minimum 0.5, which means I can increase it, but then as I decrease it, it stops at 0.5, and that is true right here. So we can control the gizmo either here, or the setting, uh, or here. Now something you might want for this gizmo to make it more intuitive is it is a x gizmo, right? So in some sense, it would make sense to put this right here and increase it to the right to indicate, okay, this is a X gizmo. And this is where these other two settings kind of come in, right? We have the location of the gizmo, which perfect, we put it right here. Although now the problem is because this is dynamic, it's going to be hovering in the middle of nowhere. And the second thing is we have the direction as a normalized vector. The direction is easy. I want it to be on the X axis. So it's one, zero, zero. But now I want this to be on this line. Well, if you think about it, we do have this X radius that perfectly defines the distance from the origin uh, to kind of this end point. So again, count Intuitively, you can take this X component. We're going to combine X, Y, Z so that this takes the X component but doesn't care about Y and Z. I'm going to connect it. Now you're going to see it's kind of double the size it should be, but it is working. And this is because the size of X tends to be more of a diameter. So I'm just going to take this and say, take the X position and divide it by two. And this is exactly going to give us what we want, just like that. So it updates to the uh, correct uh, spot. You can go to these settings and say, make it a box, which is just a design thing. It doesn't change what it does. And additionally, you can change the color from yellow to kind of this turquoise, or I guess teal and then you literally have XYZ. So in this case, we have an X. So this is a bit counterintuitive because again, we have this gizmo that we control in the viewport. That information is brought into the group input, which controls this, but then that feeds back into the position because I want it, the position to be dependent on this value and it goes into the grid. And again, this is kind of weird because if I add in reroute nodes, the arrow goes this way, but I'm going to ignore that. Okay, so let's kind of do the same thing with uh, the Y gizmo. And now that we know how this works, it's no big deal. So I add in a second gizmo. I'm going to say it's a Y gizmo. And uh, same thing as before, since we have this kind of like Y size. I'm going to say drive the value with the gizmo, take this, and now it's going to work. But I also want to combine the position, but this time on the y coordinate, which we'll see what it does in a second. And we're going to face it on the y direction. So that was a lot. But basically, the takeaway is now we have a y gizmo that also operates the same way. And because the uh, coordinates of this are essentially independent, no matter what we do, these are going to be in the correct spot, even if we rotate. But I'm claiming that gizmos can be used for anything, including like subdivisions. So to drive that point home, let's do a more interesting example. I'm going to take 
this and control the x divisions, which you can see basically does this. Note that it is a integer that cannot go below 2. And this time, even though it might make more sense to control with a linear gizmo, I want to show you uh, some of the other gizmos, specifically this dial gizmo. And you can see what it is, is it's kind of this like rotational thing. Either way, same idea. I want to control this x divisions by this value. So let's see, when I increase this, does it do anything? Not really. And the reason for this is it's kind of subtle. If I start rotating the other way, you're going to see there are divisions. And that's because secretly this dial has a direction. So right now it's facing up. I can change that direction. So this is basically the direction it's facing. Face this way, face that way, whatever. You can think of this z value as reversed by default if you want clockwise to increase. So I'm just going to flip this. Visually, it doesn't change anything. So I'd like it if they added a little arrow for indication. But now as I increase this, it will add divisions. And as I decrease, you cannot go below two. And then you can increase it again. Now, something that might be interesting is you can see we have a radius, but it's in screen space right here. What that means is as I zoom out, it kind of maintains the same size, even though the plane well, it's maintains the same size visually, I guess is what I'm trying to say, even though the plane is getting smaller in view. So this is something to play with. I can disable this uh, screen space and now this stays constant. And we could think about what makes sense for the size or the radius of this gizmo, because as this gets bigger, probably the dial should get smaller. And even more importantly, if this gets super small, I don't want the dial to be huge. Well, in this case, I would want the dial to be nested inside of here. What I want to do is I technically want to center this and the circle should be a radius in this case of kind of this X component. Whereas if I made the Y the smaller of the two, now you can see the circle is kind of dependent on this Y component. So really what I'm saying is I'm saying the radius should be the minimum of these two values, specifically these values divided by two. I'm going to take new divisions and put them here. I'm going to take the X diameter and the Y diameter and divide by two. So these are radii. I then take the minimum of these two and I'm going to say this should be the radius without screen space. And the beauty of this is, is it's now going to adjust to kind of the smallest component, which I think visually makes sense. And these kinds of transformations where you change the size and stuff like that are going to be a bit complicated for other setups. So by the way, when you hit control Z, it seems to go away. So go to edit mode, bring it back. That seems to be a bug. Uh, but that's probably, you know, that's the name of the game. I should also mention that these dial gizmos and all kinds of gizmos have this transform. This is literally so you can treat this as a piece of geometry in some sense. And I could take this and I could join the geometry with this dial gizmo. And then the interesting thing is if I do a transformation after the fact, it will move the entire thing. Whereas if I didn't join it, the uh, dial stays in the same place. Let's do one more simple example. I basically want to make a better sphere in this case. So the better sphere has this radius and you can see these dials kind of scale with it. It has a radius and it has a segment and ring count that I want to control. So let's make either this or the basic version. So again, I'm going to add in a arbitrary mesh. It doesn't matter. And this time I want to start off with the UV sphere, which is kind of the primitive we care about, but I want to add controllers for uh, these three settings. The first of which is super easy. I want a linear gizmo to control the radius. So I'm going to connect this backwards. Again, it's counterintuitive to a group input that will control the radius. So now you can see the radius is zero, but as I increase this, the radius goes up, but this gizmo always snaps to the center, but we have a few issues. First of which you can actually invert the radius and make it negative. As you can see over here, uh, that shouldn't be the case. And I want it in a different position. The radius should not be able to go under zero. So now we have kind of like a clamping over here. That is nice. And then second of all, I want the gizmo to maybe be at the top here. Luckily, the radius of the sphere exactly defines where that top is. So I'm going to take this value, which represents the radius. I'm going to combine it on the Z component. So it represents height. Let's put it here. And the direction is already correct. So look at that. That is nice and smooth. So that is the radius. And let's just do one more kind of interesting control, which is, let's say, the segment count. And because this kind of increases the segments going this way, it would make sense to add a dial at the top where clockwise means uh, increase. Super simple. I'm going to add in a dial gizmo, connect the segments directly. This quantity should be controlled by a dial gizmo. So remember, counterclockwise currently is increase and clockwise is decrease, which isn't what I would do. So I'm going to take this up vector and reverse it. So now we have this clockwise thing. And then finally, I want to kind of pin this in the same spot as the radius, which is variable. So now this gizmo is kind of an interesting case. It's dependent on the radius, which is dictated by another gizmo, which sounds more complicated than it is because this defines the position of the arrow, which is the same position as what the dial should be. So now as we increase and decrease, the dial comes with it. Although remember, it is in screen space. So I'm going to disable screen space and you could pick a fixed radius. Um, This is going to be an issue when it gets too big. You see this dial gizmo is unwieldy. So one obvious solution is we take this radius and we say that can be the radius of our gizmo. So no matter how small we make it, the gizmo kind of grows proportionally. Before we end here, I again want to pimp huh. Huh. advanced primitives, which is a blender add-on that puts all those primitives in one place. It kind of takes gizmos and make a, makes them useful in some sense. But now you know how to make it yourself, although it would take a while. You're going to get the same thing for free as a patron or as a website subscriber. That's cgmatter.com. And yeah, goodbye.